Chapter Six of Among the Night People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jude Summers. Chapter Six: The Skunks and the Oven Bird's Nest. The skunks did not go into society at all. They were very unpopular, and so many people feared or disliked them that nobody would invite them to a party. Indeed, if they had been invited to a party and had gone, the other guests would have left at once. The small people of the forest feared them because they were meat-eaters, and the larger ones disliked them because of their disagreeable habits. The skunks were handsome and quiet, but they were quick-tempered, and as soon as one of them became angry, he threw a horrible-smelling liquid on the people who displeased him. It was not only horrible-smelling, but it made those who had to smell it steadily quite sick, and would, indeed, have killed them if they had not kept in the fresh air. If a drop of this liquid got on to a person, even his wife and his children had to keep away from him for a long time. And the skunks were so unreasonable. They would not stop to see what was the real trouble, but if anyone ran into them by mistake in the darkness, they would just as likely as not throw the liquid at once. Among themselves, they seemed to be quite happy. There were from six to ten children born at a time in each family. These children lived in the burrow with their father and mother until the next spring, sleeping steadily through the coldest weather of the winter, and only awakening when it was warm enough for them to enjoy life. When spring came, the children found themselves grown up, and went off to live their own lives in new holes, while their mothers took care of the six or seven or eight or nine or ten new babies. There was one very interesting skunk family in the forest, with the father, mother, and eight children living in one hole. No two of them were marked in exactly the same way, although all were stoutly built, had small heads, little round ears, and beautiful long tails covered with soft, drooping hair. Their fur was rather long and handsome, and they were dark brown or black nearly all over. Most of them had a streak of white on the forehead, a spot of it on the neck, some on the tail, and a couple of stripes of it on their backs. One could see them quite easily by starlight on account of the white fur. The skunks were really very proud of their white stripes and spots. It is not so much having the white fur, Mrs. Skunk had been heard to say, as it is having it where all can see it. Most animals wear the dark fur on their backs and the light on their bellies, and that is to make them safe from enemies. But we dare to wear ours in plain sight. We are never afraid. And what she said was true, although it hardly seemed modest for her to talk about it in that way. It would have been more polite to let other people tell how brave her family were. Perhaps, however, if somebody else had been telling it, he would have said that that part of their courage was rudeness. Father Skunk always talked to his children as his father had talked to him, and probably as his grandfather had also talked when he was raising a family. "'Never turn out of your way for anybody,' said he. "'Let the other fellows step aside. Remember that, no matter whom you meet, no matter how large the other people may be. If they see you, they will get out of your path, and if they can't, it is not your fault. Don't speak to them, and don't hurry.' always take your time. Father Skunk was slow and stately. It was a sight worth seeing when he started off for a night's ramble, walking with a slow and measured gait, and carrying his fine tail high over his back. He always went by himself. One is company, two is a crowd, he would say as he walked away. When they were old enough, the young skunks began to walk off alone as soon as it was dark. Mother Skunk also went alone, and perhaps she had the best time of all, for it was a great rest not to have eight babies tumbling over her back and getting under her feet, and hanging on to her with their thirty-two paws, and sometimes even scratching her with their one hundred and sixty claws. They still slept through the days in the old hole, so they were together much of the time, 
but they did not hunt in parties, as raccoons and weasels do. One of the brothers had no white whatever on his tail, so they called him the black-tailed skunk. He had heard in some way that there was an oven's bird nest on the ground by the fern bank, and he made up his mind to find it the very next night and eat the eggs which were inside. Another brother was called the spotted skunk, because the spot on his neck was so large. He had found the oven bird's nest himself while on his way home in the early morning. He would have liked to rob it then, but he had eaten so much that night that he thought it better to wait. So it happened that when the family awakened the next night, two of the children had important plans of their own. Neither of them would have told for anything, but they couldn't quite keep from hinting about it as they made themselves ready to go out. Ha-ha! said the black-tailed skunk. I know something you don't know. Oh, tell us! cried four or five of the other children, while the spotted skunk twisted his head and said, You don't either. I do too, replied the black-tailed skunk. Children, children, exclaimed Mrs. Skunk, while their father said that he couldn't see where his children got their quarrelsome disposition, for none of his people had ever contradicted or disputed. His wife told him that she really thought them very good, and that she was sure they behaved much better than most skunks of their age. Then their father walked off in his most stately manner, putting his feet down almost flat and carrying his tail a little higher than usual. "'I do know something that you don't,' repeated the black-tailed skunk. "'And it's something nice, too.' "'Ah!' said the spotted skunk. "'I don't believe it, and I don't care anyhow.' "'I know you don't know, and I know you'd want to know if you knew what I know,' said the black-tailed skunk, who was now getting so excited that he could hardly talk straight. "'Children!' exclaimed their mother. "'Not another word about that. "'I do wish you would wake up good-natured.' "'He started it,' said the spotted skunk. "'And we're not quarreling anyhow. "'But I guess he'd give a good deal to know where I'm going.' "'Children,' repeated their mother, "'go at once. "'I will not have you talking in this way "'before your brothers and sisters. "'Do not stop to talk, but go.' "'So the two brothers started out for the night.' and each thought he would go a roundabout way to fool the other. The black-tailed skunk went to the right, and the spotted skunk went to the left. But each of them, you know, really started to rob the oven bird's nest. It was a very dark night. Even the stars were all hidden behind thick clouds, and one could hardly see one's forepaws while walking. But of course the night prowlers of the forest are used to this and four-footed people are not so likely to stumble and fall as two-footed ones. Besides, young skunks have to remember where logs and stumps of trees are, just as other people have to remember their lessons. So it happened that while Mrs. Ovenbird was sleeping happily with her four eggs safe and warm under her breast, two people were coming from different ways to rob her. Such a snug nest as it was! She had chosen a tiny hollow in the fern bank and had cunningly woven dry grasses and leaves into a ball-shaped nest, which fit neatly into the hollow and had a doorway on one side. The black-tailed skunk sneaked up to the nest from one side. The spotted skunk sneaked up from the other side. Once the black-tailed skunk thought he heard some creature moving towards him. At the same minute, the spotted skunk thought he heard somebody, so he stopped to listen. Neither heard anything. Mrs. Ovenbird was sure that she heard a leaf rustle outside, and it made her anxious, until she remembered that a dead twig might have dropped from the beech tree overhead and hit the dry leaves below. Slowly the two brothers crept towards the nest and each other. They moved very quietly because each wanted to catch the mother bird if he could. Close to the nest hollow they crouched, and sprang with jaws open and sharp teeth ready to bite. There was a sudden crashing of leaves and ferns. The two brothers had sprung squarely at each other. Each was bitten, growled, and ran away. And how they did run! It is not often, you know, that skunks go faster than a walk, but when they are really scared they move very, very swiftly. 
Mrs. Ovenbird felt her nest roof crush down upon her for a minute as two people rolled and growled outside. Then she heard them running away in different directions and knew that she was safe, for a time at least. In the morning she repaired her nest and told her bird friends about it. They advised her to take her children away as soon as possible after they were hatched. If the skunks have found your nest, they said, you may have another call from them. When the black-tailed skunk came stealing home in the first faint light just before sunrise, he found the spotted skunk telling the rest of the family how some horrible great fierce beast had pounced upon him in the darkness and bitten him on the shoulder. It was so dark, said he, that I couldn't see him at all, but I am sure it must have been a bear. They turned to tell the black-tailed skunk about his brother's misfortune and saw that he limped badly. "'Did the bear catch you, too?' they cried. "'Yes,' answered he. "'It must have been a bear. "'It was so big and strong and fierce, but I bit him, too. "'I wouldn't have run away from him, but he was so much bigger than I.' "'That was just the way with me,' said the spotted skunk. "'I wouldn't have run if he hadn't been so big.' "'You should have thrown liquid on him,' said their father. "'Then he would have been the one to run.' The brothers hung their heads. "'We never thought,' they cried. "'We think it must have been because we were so surprised and didn't see him coming.' "'Well,' said their father sternly, "'I suppose one must be patient with children. But such unskunk-like behavior makes me very much ashamed of you both.' Then the two bitten brothers went to bed in disgrace, although their mother was sorry for them and loved them, as mothers will do even when their children are naughty or cowardly. One night, some time later, these two brothers happened to meet down by the fern bank. It was bright moonlight, and they stopped to visit, for both were feeling very good-natured. The black-tailed skunk said, Come with me, and I'll show you where there is an oven-bird's nest. All right, answered the spotted skunk. Then I'll show you one. I've just been waiting for a bright night, said the black-tailed skunk, because I came here once in the dark and had bad luck. It was near here, said the spotted skunk, that I was bitten by the bear. They stopped beside a tiny hollow. There is the nest, said the black-tailed skunk, pointing with one of his long forefeet. Why, that is the one I meant, exclaimed the spotted skunk. I found it first, said the black-tailed skunk, and I'd have eaten the eggs before, if that bear hadn't bitten me. Just at that minute, the two skunks had a new idea. We do believe, cried they, that we bit each other. We certainly did, said the spotted skunk. But we'll never tell, said the black-tailed skunk. Now, they added together, let's eat everything. But they didn't. In fact, they didn't eat anything, for the eggs were hatched, and the young birds had left the nest only the day before. End of chapter 6